Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. My wife might have cheated with her friend's ex-boyfriend. Hi everyone. I heard it's very helpful to be here and I hope so. I think something from my wife's past has come back to haunt me. I want to talk about it with strangers because even though I think my wife's having a physical affair, there's still a chance I'm overreacting. With everything going on, it looks like my wife's been unfaithful. Me, male 31, and my wife, female 30, live in Detroit and have a great marriage. About 11 years ago, I was visiting my wife at her parents' house and her best friend got in my face and asked me why I didn't put a ring on my wife's finger yet. While her best friend, we'll just go and call her Mandy, was grilling me, my wife wasn't stopping her, so I got the point pretty quick. Since I cared about her so much, I was happy they felt that way. After that, I started to make moves to one day marry her. Two years after that, we got married and we now have two beautiful daughters. Getting married was one of my happiest days and I had always planned one day to be a good husband and father. My wife wanted a pretty big wedding and a lot of people attended. We even got some of our relatives from Puerto Rico to attend. Me and my wife weren't rich, but we were good providers and our kids were always good. My wife was always a great person. She's smart, fun, and has a great sense of humor, which you don't expect from gorgeous women like her. She was a good mom, and our daughters, who are seven and four years old, love and respect her. Our oldest even acts like her. This is something I would always tell her. And she was gorgeous. I loved her pretty smile, her brown eyes, and especially her amazing backside. She was the type of girl who struggled a little to put some jeans on, and whether it was in a sexy dress or some tights, it was visible on her slim figure. She always loved how she looked, and it caused my mom to believe she had an ego. She might be right, but I never really minded. I work in a renovation project facility, and my wife owns her own nail salon. This never surprised me because she always was a fashionista, which she disagreed about. My wife was always up on the latest trends and had to have everything new. Whether it was the new iPhone, new heels, name brand clothes, she had to have it. This made me roll my eyes, but it was her money, so I couldn't say anything, until she became a parent and it made her have to cut back. Instead of keeping up with the glamour girl life, now she focuses on our daughters more. She's now used to the last year model iPhone and cut back on designer clothes for Disney characters our daughters love wearing. The only time she wears her good clothes is on holidays or vacations. Even though that's the case, I had to splurge less as well. It doesn't matter because our kids are more important and my family is my priority. Everything seemed okay, but now I'm seeing problems after me and my wife ran into her old friend's ex. Me and our family was at the supermarket buying some groceries. Our oldest reminded about her Pop-Tarts and my wife told me to go with her to get her favorite ones. After finally making her decision on a new flavor, we came back out the aisle to see my wife laughing and talking to some guy. When my daughter interrupted them with the Pop-Tarts, my wife introduced me to him. She said this guy apparently was the ex-boyfriend of her old friend. Let's just call her Tasha. At first, I couldn't remember who Tasha was. Then I remembered she used to work with Tasha at some old job before my wife had started up her own business. This guy, we'll call him Trey, seemed happy to see us, was friendly to us, so I didn't mind at first. Trey and my wife caught up a little bit more, and it was awkward to see her smiling all in his face and seemed a little too happy to see him again. After waiting patiently, I signaled it was time to cook dinner, and Trey laughed, saying it was good to see us. On the ride home, my wife told me how surprised she was to see him at the supermarket. She said she was more surprised that Tasha and Trey had broken up. I asked how long it was that she spoke to Tasha, and she said about four years. After hearing that, I had thought to myself that they definitely lost touch. At first, I thought that would be the last that I had heard about Trey, but as time went by, I noticed that Trey and my wife kept in touch. They would talk on the phone and also on her social media. She would mention me every once in a while, so I thought nothing about it because I felt included. They started talking more frequently, and the conversation got longer, even up to after hours. But I started getting suspicious when Super Bowl Sunday came around. On the day of the Super Bowl, my wife was talking to Trey on the phone when I asked her a question. After answering me, a little while later she came to me and said, Trey wanted to talk to me. Surprised, I took the phone and asked him what's up. He asked me was I going to watch the Super Bowl and I told him I planned to. When he asked me who was I going for, I told him the Lions. Laughing, he said he was too and offered to watch the game with me. I told him that would be great, but we were going to have a bunch of kids over and I doubted he would want to deal with that. Laughing, he said never mind and passed the phone back to my wife. I thought that was the end of it, but a couple hours later my wife came back and said Trey wanted to talk to me again. He said if I could get away there was a Super Bowl party a friend of his was having and I could go and watch it with them. 
My wife told me she would call her brother and tell him to pick up his kids earlier and we could go a little late, and I decided to go. After he came and got his kids, me and my wife got ready to go and got there around the halftime show. While talking to everybody, I understood that the party was being thrown because somebody was a diehard Cincinnati Bengals fan. The person who threw the party argued with who would win and wanted the Bengals to lose. He definitely got his wish and the Bengals lost. Stop the guy from being a loudmouth. After having a good laugh at this guy's expense, we all just enjoyed the get-together. It was at this point where I started to get suspicious because of how my wife was interacting with Trey. I didn't like how she was all in his face and I felt left out in the conversations. I thought it was because I wasn't being social enough and put myself in the conversation enough. At some point, I asked him about why him and Tasha broke up. Trey said he and Tasha were just casually dating. They weren't really serious back then. My wife laughed and said she was surprised because Tasha really liked him. After a while, I said I had to go and get another Smirnoff and walked into the porch where the cooler was. After I was mingling with some people on the porch, I went back in the house. Going back in the house, I was looking for my wife and saw them talking in a corner. I was about to walk over to them, but I felt a weird vibe about how they were talking. He was a little too close to her and was acting all predatory with her. I paused and stayed out of sight to see what was going on. He held my wife's hand and she was giggling all shy. After that, she walked into the kitchen and he followed her while looking at her butt. All I could say was, what the F? But then he moved a little closer to get a good look in the kitchen. Standing by the sink, my wife was talking to some girl and her back was turned to Trey. While talking to my wife, the girl looked at Trey and could see that he was looking at her. I think she told my wife and my wife looked back at her right and smiled at him. Turning back to the girl, she continued their conversation knowing that Trey was looking at her butt. Usually I love the way my wife dresses, but now I was feeling very paranoid. My wife would talk to the girl and then look back and smile at Trey as he continued to take glances at my wife's backside and her yoga pants. And my wife wouldn't budge. She would just look at him like she was saying, I know you want to do me. Even though they would try to play it off, they would go back to looking at each other and you would notice if you were paying attention. All I could think was, I hope I'm not seeing what I think I'm seeing. After the girl said something to my wife, she followed her back into the living room and she ended up seeing me. She asked me what the guys on the porch were talking about and I told her nothing much and that I was ready to go. She said she wanted to stay longer, but I reminded her that her brother was still with our kids waiting on us so he could leave. After we said goodbye to Trey and everybody, we went back home, especially since we both had to work tomorrow. Riding back, I had to tell her what I saw. In the car, I told her it looked like Trey was trying to hit on her and she acted like I was crazy. She laughed it off and said I was wrong. I left it alone, but I wanted to start paying more attention to them after what I saw. He was definitely looking at her backside. The more I paid attention, the more suspicious I had noticed she was acting. She always had her phone. She always brought up Trey to me and to her best friend, Mandy. Then she started handcuffing her phone, talking all the way to early in the morning. One night, I asked her, was she still talking to Trey? She just shot me a look and said she was. After that, she hung up the phone after about five minutes. After a while, I got tired of her talking so late and asked her to talk in the daytime with him and her excuse was she talks to Mandy then. And when I told her it was real inappropriate to talk to Trey so late at night, she'd laugh and say I'm acting paranoid. Everything I'd try and say, she would dismiss it and say I'm worried about nothing. All my questions did make her stop bringing up Trey, however. I guess she thought it would stop me from getting all upset, but it didn't. Two days ago made me believe the worst. On my wife's off day, she said she was going over to her friend Mandy's house to do her mom's nails. Since I knew about this a couple days ago, I wasn't really suspicious. Later on that night, my youngest daughter asked me if we could eat pizza, but I told her that her mom was cooking dinner. She made a big fuss about it, and since I was in the mood for pizza as well, decided to call my wife and tell her she didn't have to cook anything. When I called my wife, it went straight to voicemail. I tried again, and the same thing happened. I had to ask myself why the hell was her phone off, and that this never happened before. I let half an hour pass, and her phone still went to voicemail. After that, I decided to call Mandy. When I called Mandy, she actually picked up. I asked her was my wife there, and she said she left. I said I thought she was going to do Mandy a favor and do her mother's nails for her, but she said she got a phone call and just left. I asked her who called, and she said she didn't know, but she was mad that my wife had to tell Mandy to tell her mom to come by her nail salon tomorrow. This surprised me because Mandy was like a real sister to her, and to hear that this happened was just effed up. After hanging up with her, I called around and nobody called my wife. So to me, this left only Trey. I got so angry, I couldn't believe this was happening. At the Super Bowl party, Trey told us where he stayed, but I didn't know the address, only the street. If my wife was there, I knew he was doing her. 
After grabbing my keys, I was just about to walk out the door when I remembered my kids were still in their room playing. Grabbing my phone, I called my mom to see if she could babysit for a while, but she didn't pick up her phone. My best friend, let's call him Marcus, was my last option, so I called him. When he picked up, I asked him what he was doing, and he said his girl was cooking dinner. I told him I was about to ask him a favor, and he asked me what it was. I told him never mind, it was too big of a favor, but he asked me again, so I told him I think my wife was cheating on me. After telling Marcus this, he went silent like it was the last thing he'd think I'd say. He asked me was I serious, and I told him everything. He said that he couldn't come and watch the kids, but I could bring the kids to him. This pissed me off because he lived on the other side of town. After getting the kids ready to leave, it took about 30 minutes to get there. After getting to Marcus, he asked me, did I know where Trey lived? I told him the street and he looked at me like I was crazy. The street Trey lived on was a long avenue and he asked me, was I really going to drive all the way down the street to find them? And I said, yeah. When I was about to leave, he stopped me and told me to go to in his car. He said, if I'm wrong and they see my car, my wife could call me a crazy husband and at least they wouldn't recognize his car right off. After handing me the keys, he told me don't do anything crazy in his car. He asked did I want him to come with me and I said no. It's already effed up, he's involved. He took the kids and I made my way to try to find my wife. Hopefully I wasn't too late and I could bust her in the act, but I hoped I was really wrong about this. But my instincts as a man still bother me. After a long ride, I made it down the street Trey lives on. Slowing down, I tried to look for my wife's silver Kia. It was a terrible neighborhood. But at this point, I couldn't care less. All the suspicious BS my wife was doing led me to this. I was really hoping I couldn't find her car here, but eventually, I did. Not only did I see her car, but I saw her and Trey as well. She was wearing a pink sweatsuit, and Trey had on nothing but a white beater, some shorts, and some flip-flops. She looked like she was getting ready to leave, and I couldn't believe what I saw. I mean, the guy had practically no clothes on, and I didn't like how he was again too close to her. Driving past, I threw a fit in the car. I kept saying he screwed her. I know he screwed her. I didn't have any other explanation except he was doing my wife. And I bet magically her phone works now. Not only did I catch her all hugged up with this guy now, I had to try and beat her home. When I got home, I was surprised to see that me and the kids beat her home with time to spare. After putting the kids to bed, I decided to wait up for my wife to come in. Almost 40 minutes later, she came in the door and she was acting unhappy to come back. Looking over at me, she walked right past me and went in the bedroom. Her not saying anything really blew my mind. I walked in her bedroom immediately and asked why her phone was turned off, and she told me that she had never turned it off. She said her phone died and she had to charge it up. I asked her where she was, and she said she already told she was over at Mandy's house. I told her Mandy said she left, and she brushed it off like she was irritated. She said that don't mean she was there, and it just blew away that I was going through this right now. I asked her did she leave Mandy to be with Trey, and she hesitated for a minute before saying, yeah. I asked, she didn't say anything, and she told me it didn't matter. She said she's tired of me having a problem with Trey, and she just wanted to leave this alone because she was tired. She asked me did the kids eat, and I told her we went out to eat. Not even asking questions, she went back in the living room to watch TV and be on her phone. After that night, she's not the same wife that I knew. Now she don't talk to me, she's always texting on her phone in the dining room and she's always looking at me like she wants to get away from me, but she can't. This is BS because she's acting like I did something to her when all I do is cater to her. And whose battery dies in the middle of the day? I really don't know what to do and I need to make a decision on my gut feelings. I don't know if she cheated, but her behavior has been a bunch of red flags. I hope I'm overreacting, but the signs are there, especially at the Super Bowl party. They've been talking all day. He's been looking at her butt at a party and she allowed it. And now she's meeting up at his house secretly. He has to be doing her. I will try an update once I find something solid, but I really need to know if I'm overreacting. Our first response comes from Miserable Ty5999. Wow, really wow. Pack her a bag and have her call Trey to tell him she is coming to stay. No remorse, no sorry, and lies. Again, wow. See a lawyer, let her know, and have her served. If she pulls her head out, you can always call it off but the ball has to be in her court to fix this. Act quickly and act decisively is the only way to go. Letting it drag on will end in disaster and pain. Good luck. Our next thought comes from Daloco6913. She cheated and is still cheating. Walk away from her and set up co-parenting. Your kids are now being raised in a very toxic household. One more comment before moving on. JNH daughter says, seriously, brother? Come on, really? First off, why did you let her entertain this man? Why did you go to this party? 
Are you truly that blind or what's wrong with you to let her constantly disrespect you? They are cheating and you are fine with it. You have children to think of. Divorce her and kick her out. She can go screw with Trey without disrespecting you. Don't play blind. Don't stay for the kids. They don't need a disrespectful whore for a mother. You need to stop thinking she's someone she's not. You more than likely have been ignoring her disrespectful behavior for a long time. Your marriage wasn't perfect. She wasn't the perfect wife or mother. If she was, she wouldn't be destroying her family for a dick. Do not give her any chances she doesn't deserve it. Choose you. Choose your self-respect and self-worth. She's a whore and most likely have always been one. You just don't want to see her or accept it. Update. My wife might have cheated with her friend's ex-boyfriend. Update. I want to thank everybody for their support and honestly helping me. People here have been guiding me through this and it's been helpful. I was going to post this weekend, but so much has happened that I had to post this update today. This is definitely a crazy time for me and it's blowing me away right now how right you are about my wife. At the beginning of this year, when my wife ran into her friend, Tasha, ex-boyfriend, at the supermarket, when my wife introduced me to this guy, Trey, I didn't think it was a big deal. At first it seemed like she had reunited with an old friend or whatever, but she seemed a little too excited to see him again. After that, they kept in touch and it was beginning to be too much. She started showing all the red flags and it was looking real suspicious. They'd talk on the phone for hours. They would like each other's pics on Facebook. And this guy started calling late at night. When I told her all this looked inappropriate, she said I was overreacting. When she spoke with him, she would laugh and giggle, and she would try to teach him Spanish words since we're Puerto Rican. What was worse was that at the Super Bowl party, Trey had invited us to. At the party, I caught him checking out my wife, especially her backside. She had the type of butt where if she walked past, you would wait a few seconds, then turn and look at it. Eventually, she became aware of this, or even caught him, and didn't do or say anything about it. When I told her that he was checking her out, she dismissed that too. It got to the point where I had to try and find her last week because she wasn't where she claimed she was. She was supposed to go over to her best friend, Mandy's house, to do Mandy's mom's nails, but flaked on her after Trey called her. Since my wife's phone went straight to voicemail, I assumed she was with Trey, and I had to call my best friend, Marcus, and he let me borrow his car to find her. Driving down Trey's street found them, and it bothered me that he practically had no clothes on. He had on just a white beater, some shorts, and it looked like flip-flops. Driving back to Marcus's house, he asked me what I saw. I told him, and even he admitted that he thinks he screwed her. I told him I think so too, especially since he has no clothes on. If I was dressed that way and somebody came over, my wife would tell me to put some clothes on. He looked like he just woke up or something. He asked me what I planned on doing, but I didn't really know at the time. After that, I had thanked Marcus for babysitting my kids and surprisingly made it home almost 40 minutes before my wife did. When she came back, she even looked guilty. When I asked where she was, she was super vague and wouldn't answer me in a direct way. Eventually, I just had to drop it, especially since I didn't catch them in the act like I planned to. People here said it was going to get worse than it did. Now she looks at me like I'm her prison guard and don't really want to talk to me. She only talks to her friends on her phone and doesn't interact with the kids and treats them like they're a chore. She just sits in our little dining room area and texts. I didn't even know what to say to her. What was even worse was thanks to my schedule, I couldn't really stop her from cheating. My wife knew my everyday routine and I'm sure Trey did too. Between my job, taking care of our kids and obligations to my mom, they apparently met up while I was out. I know this because while I was out, I would try to call her and she never answered. My wife's schedule was more flexible than mine, especially since my wife was her own boss thanks to her nail salon. Whenever I got back home, my wife wouldn't be there, especially if she didn't have to pick up the kids from school. And when she came back, she would be vague about where she was. This really messed with my mind and gave me what I think is anxiety. I would be with my mom and I would be thinking of my wife riding some guy's meat. And this was ever since she left Trey's house that night. If it wasn't for this community, I would have been a lot worse. If I was blindsided by this, I don't know what my mindset would have been. But after I was told to calm down and start monitoring them for truth, I had to man up. After doing just that, I was able to get the truth and found out today that yes, Trey was screwing my wife and my plan worked out perfectly. That weekend after work, I bought a voice activated recorder and put it in her car. At first I tested it out when I took the kids to eat McDonald's and it worked pretty good. After that I put it in my wife's car. Since it's possible he banged her in the car, it should pick it up. It should even pick up any talk or incriminating conversations they could be having. Doing this, I did feel crazy and couldn't believe this was my life. The most important advice I think I got was to act like I wasn't concerned about Trey. It was a lie, but I think I need to start getting used to it. 
Not bringing him up and acting like everything was good got her to ease up a little. It was hard, but it just kept my mind on getting the truth. When I told Marcus about this, even he thought I was a genius. A few days ago, I snuck out and got the voice active recorder out of her car and listened to what was on it. I heard a few things, but I definitely heard her talking with Trey in her car. The one thing that stood out was when they were riding somewhere. The music was on, but it could still kind of make out what they were saying. He was definitely flirting with my wife and calling her sexy. My wife was giggling and I couldn't make out what she was saying, but it wasn't stopping him. I heard him tell her to stop somewhere and things got silent for a minute. Then it sounded like a bunch of guys got in the car and they drove off. It got harder to hear them with everybody holding their own conversations. It sounded like she was driving them around to places. Through all their nonsense, I heard him say he was trying to come over. For a second, I couldn't hear the conversation, but I definitely heard my wife say to Trey, She has to leave early, so come over. That was pretty much the end of the usefulness of the voice activated recorder in her car. They just talked and laughed, and one guy called Trey thirsty. After that, I tried to figure out who was my wife talking about when she said somebody was leaving early. I thought it might be Mandy, but even though Mandy was like a sister to her, it didn't seem like she told Mandy about Trey. She definitely wasn't talking about her mom, so it had to be the girl who runs the salon with my wife. It didn't make too much sense to me because she was a teenager learning to do nails there, but it was the best thing to go on. Nobody else made sense. I called up my friend Marcus to see if we could swap cars for the day, and he said yeah. After telling him what I heard, he was shocked, called her a high price hoe, and said he hoped I'd catch her this time. Already knowing how I move, she knew to leave after me and my mom's next door neighbors helped her with her yard. Since I couldn't cancel on my mom, I told her I'd only stay for a little while because I was tired from work. My mom blew down on me for leaving early, but then her next door neighbor said he could handle it. Around 9, I pulled up to my wife's shop when it was closing. It's located in a strip mall, so it was possible to hide with the other cars there, especially since it was Marcus's car I drove. Inside, Trey was definitely there and I was pissed to know I was right. Nobody was left inside except my wife, Trey, and let's call her Sherry. My wife was definitely dressed to impress and Trey was all over her. I saw Trey was behind my wife with his arms wrapped around her while they were talking. After about 20 minutes, they really started to get into it and Trey was kissing on my wife's neck and grabbing her on her behind. After trapping her against the wall, it was clear it was kissing and Sherry just watched them. After about five minutes, Sherry must have said something about leaving and they smiled and waved her off. Taking Trey's hand, they walked off to the back where it looked like they were going to go down into the basement area. I've been down in the basement area when she first started up the salon, so I knew that it was the only thing in the back. She was looking for a bigger place to run her shop so she could have an office space, since the place she's at now wasn't really high-end looking enough for her. If she doesn't know anything, she knows how to market something. I was so pissed off, I can't lie. I really can't believe this woman would do this to me. I did so much for her and she would do this to me. And Trey was definitely a real snake. He never gave a good vibe about him, and now I see why. After I grabbed my voice activated recorder, I made my way over to the salon. Sherry had just got done grabbing her things, so I waited for her to come out before I made my presence known. When I called out to her, she looked like she saw a ghost in front of her. I told her not to lock the doors, and that I know everything. She claimed she didn't know what I was talking about, and I said I just watched them the whole time. I called her a fat lying witch, and we got into a huge argument. She said don't blame her that my wife was screwing another man, and I called her messy and to get out of my way. She said I wasn't going to be able to catch them screwing because the door was locked. I had asked why they would lock the door if Sherry knew they were screwing already, and she said they didn't want anybody coming down. Making my way in, pulled out my phone and called my wife. Apparently, Sherry decided to follow me in while I made my way back to the back. My wife didn't answer my call, so I surprised her by banging on the basement door since it actually was locked. I didn't know what was going on down there, but I knew if she didn't come up, we were over. After banging on the door three times telling them to come up, they still didn't come from the basement. Turning back to Sherry, I asked her how long she knew about this. Sherry swore she knew about Trey for about a month and that my wife started cheating with him recently. She said he came in on her break and after a while, they had went down in the basement. She said the next day they would talk about what happened. I asked her, did she know that was Tasha's ex-boyfriend? And she said my wife told her. I told Sherry we had kids and she said she didn't have anything to do with that. I said that's fine and that I'll be using what she said in court. When Sherry asked me what I was talking about, I showed her a voice activated recorder and told her she can go home now. Getting back in the car, I drove back to Marcus's, who was a big help with not just the car, but watching the kids too. I told him what I saw, and he and his girlfriend consoled me. After that, while me and Marcus were talking, Mandy had called my phone. 
This was the last thing I needed, but I should have expected it. I decided to pick up and she said my wife told her everything and that my wife wanted to talk to me tomorrow. I told her to put her on the phone now, but Mandy said she won't let me talk to her now and she knew I was going to blow up on her. I told her I wanted to speak to my wife, but Mandy wouldn't put her on. Mandy said if I came over, she'd call the police and wait until tomorrow. She said she was going to make my wife call me and they both wanted me to calm down. I said, yeah, whatever, and just hung up. After coming back home with the kids, I got super emotional. Not only that, my anxiety started kicking in again. I still can't believe this is happening to me. Even after I did everything right with this woman, somehow I did it wrong. I thought after being married for this long, I was sure I didn't have to worry about this happening. The worst is that this wasn't a one-time thing. He was screwing her consistently. Now my whole world is going to have to change because whatever reason. I can't wait to see what she has to say tomorrow. I will update when I hear what she has to say. The ball is in her court and if I don't like what I'm hearing, I'm getting us a divorce. My mind is racing and I think it may have been a bad idea to leave Marcus's house. I feel alone, but I had to post here since everybody wanted to know exactly what my wife was doing. A first comment after that from Zach Taylor 5 There's nothing to say, but you need to divorce her. Yaybone one chimes in this. You need to get out of reactionary mode and start being proactive about moving on with your own life. Sure, talk to her, but incorporate everything she says into your own decision-making process. Don't wait for her for anything. Consult with an attorney, make plans for the kids, and there's really not much else she can say at this point. And what she will say will be nothing more than excuses and blame shifting. Scary Inspector 8315 says, Bruh, what the F? Divorce is clearly the only way. Pick your self-respect. Your kids are watching. One more thought from Skidabop. No offense, but what exactly are you hoping to get out of the conversation? I feel like she's either just going to tell you she's ready for divorce or some BS. What's your end game? Because you sound like you're willing to be convinced if you like what you hear. Now back to the update. Last update. Hello, everybody. I really want to thank everybody for their support these past couple of weeks. Everybody seemed to really be concerned about me talking to my wife after I caught her cheating and assumed I was going to immediately reconcile with her after what she put me through. I can't lie. I did want to know what my wife could possibly say to justify her actions. I was in a bad state of mind and kind of still am. Ever since me and my wife ran into Trey, who I can now call her affair partner at the grocery store, things went south ever since. It's hard to forgive that, especially since I had to practically chase this woman across the city. Now that I have multiple conversations on my voice activated recorder, there's nothing anybody can tell me about what's been happening since the beginning of this year. Thanks to this community, I was able to kind of confront this, even though I may have stumbled a little at first, but I'm super embarrassed at how this ended. After I saw Trey and her kissing after hours in her nail salon, I got a call from her best friend, Mandy. She said that my wife wanted to explain the next day and I agreed to it. The next day came and my wife never called me. That was fine with me because I was in the middle of calling everybody to let them know about her cheating and I called a lawyer. After talking to a recommended lawyer online, I was supposed to call him back because he was leaving the office at the time and he had questions for me later. After that, I took my kids over to my mom's house because she demanded they stay with her for the weekend. My mom blamed this on me because I married her and she said she didn't trust me with the kids right now. My aunt came in from the kitchen and asked why my mom was raising her voice. My mom explained it to my aunt and she looked super shocked. Throwing her hands up, she sat on my mom's couch to unmute the TV after my mom muted it to start blowing down on me. Even though my mom came down on me hard, I was happy she was taking the kids. I had a lot going on in my head and being myself helped me get it out since I was still angry when we arrived. My friend Marcus called me too and asked if I had spoke to my wife. I told him no and that she was probably sucking some dick somewhere and he said she may not even call which is fine with me. I was just preparing to move on. On Saturday, I was trying to clean my house and I heard my wife's keys in the door. I really must not have been paying attention to anything because I should have heard her car pull up. My wife, her friend Mandy walked in and it caught me by surprise. She definitely didn't look like her normal self because she was wearing a gray Nike sweatsuit. Not makeup and her hair wasn't combed and held together by a rubber band. The shame on her face showed remorse, probably for the fact that she had got caught. I wasn't used to seeing her like this because she was usually a breathtaking woman. Maybe this was only a privilege for Trey now. She clearly liked the way he was checking her out at the Super Bowl party, especially when he was looking at her butt. My wife had what you would call a booty, and just like other girls, wore yoga pants and I caught Trey trying to sneak looks at it. I think that's what you can say started all of this and it got them caught after me being suspicious. After walking into our house, Mandy asked me to just let my wife speak, and I said fine. After that, Mandy said something to my wife and went out on the porch. I told my wife I was surprised she came and even bothered to talk to me. 
She said she felt like she needed to after I saw her and Trey at her salon. She said after that, she was scared to come back home. She asked where the kids were and I told her they were with my mom. She looked down as if that wasn't what she wanted to hear and told me she was mad about me telling her co-owner of the nail salon, Sherry, to tell me everything about Trey. I told her that I didn't have to. I told her after Sherry got caught, she immediately ratted her out to save her own skin. My wife said they got into an argument and Sherry hasn't come back to work and I told her that she got caught cheating and I don't care about Sherry having a big mouth. My wife threw up her hands and said I was right and said she didn't want to fight. She said she was sorry and she didn't want me to find out about her cheating with Trey. I told her saying sorry wasn't going to make it okay and that she betrayed me. I asked her how could she just parade this guy around me, acting like he's just a friend and then throw out our relationship in the garbage. She said she was sorry and she let her fantasies with Trey get out of hand. She said when her friend, Tasha, from her old job was dating him, she always told my wife how great he was. She would always say how handsome he was, and she would show my wife all the sexting Tasha and Trey did while they were at work. The next day, Tasha and my wife would talk about it, and my wife liked it. She said when Trey came to their job to pick her up, she saw Trey and thought he was handsome. After talking about Trey with Tasha, she knew she liked him. I asked her did he say something to her at the time, and she said he complimented her a few times, and that was it. I told her I knew something was off because when we ran into Trey at the supermarket, I don't remember her giving him her phone number. She said he asked for it, and he began texting her, and started flirting with her again, then it turned into sexting. She said after that, she started hanging out with him and some of his friends. I asked her was that the day when she was supposed to be doing Mandy's mom's nails down at Trey's house, and I named off his street to let her know I knew where he lived exactly. She asked how I knew this and I told her I went looking for her and saw her with him outside that night. I asked her again and she said yes and I asked did she screw him and all she could say was that she was sorry. She said when he called her he said everybody was there hanging out and he convinced my wife to ghost Mandy to hang with them. She said when she got there she waited for more people to show up and Trey had admitted he just wanted her to be alone with him. I had asked her why she didn't leave and she said she knew what he wanted. She said he got all touchy with her and started kissing her. She said things got out of hand with him and she didn't stop it. After that, I called her a stupid witch and she screwed up our marriage and she said she was sorry. I told her I can never trust her again and she said she wasn't asking me to. I asked what she meant by that and she said she wanted to pursue a relationship with Trey. I told her she was freaking crazy and she said she really wanted to. She said she always fantasized about Trey and she didn't think it mattered until we ran into him that day. She said when he told her that him and Tasha weren't serious, it actually made her happy, especially after he started flirting with her again. She said she secretly hoped something would happen, and it did when she went to his house that night. She said when he was screwing her, she wanted to feel bad, but she didn't. After he would call her to hang out, she said it would happen spontaneously. Then it was planned. She said she should have talked to me about it instead of going behind my back with Trey. She said that I didn't deserve it, and this was the better way to go about it. I told her she was crazy and asked if she really wanted to leave her family for this guy. She said it was a feeling she always had about him and she wished to pursue it before being married to me. She told me Trey wanted a relationship with her especially since she liked Trey more than she liked me. I asked her was she screwing his friends too and she called me crazy. I told her I had to ask because I know she's been riding around with them. She said that Trey would sometimes call her and tell her to pick his friends up and give them a ride somewhere. I asked was she now some kind of free Uber and she just rolled her eyes. She said it just happened and I just said, whatever. My wife said she wanted out of the marriage because she didn't want to be married to me while thinking about somebody else. I reminded her she couldn't date Trey at the time because he was already dating Tasha and we were still together at the time. And I asked her what Tasha would think about her wanting to be with Trey. She said they were just casually dating at the time and she wouldn't care now. I told her that's true, but Tasha would think less of her as a friend and she would be right. My wife said she didn't want to argue. She wanted to end this on good terms. After that, she left with Mandy who kept peeking her head in and they drove back to God knows where. As much as I didn't want to agree with my wife, she was right. I would hate being married to her and knowing she'd rather be with another guy. She was very delusional, but I'd rather let her find out herself. After that, living in the house by myself was even harder. I was definitely pissed off at this embarrassment. Is this what relationships are like now? Is it that easy to throw your marriage away like this? I honestly thought being married for nine years would mean we didn't have to worry about these things. When Monday came, I called off work to meet with a lawyer and file for divorce. Somebody said I could get alimony from my wife's nail salon, and he said that if the kids want to live with me, that's doable. My mom has been a big help with the kids, but I found out my mom spoiled my kids while they were there, 
with her and also told them that my wife was leaving the family to go live with somewhere else. When my oldest asked me, all I could do was shake my head thanks to my mom. I have had to tell them and they didn't take it well. Even though my mom did that, it fell in my favor. After picking up my kids, we rolled past Trey's house and I showed my kids that's where mom wants to live. I asked my kids did they want to live there with her. They both looked at the rickety house with a bunch of guys standing on the porch and said no. I asked were they sure and my oldest said not for a million dollars. I called my wife on my lunch break today and told her that I already filed for divorce and she said okay. She said she wanted to come over and talk to the kids and I told her my mom was picking them up from school today because I had things to do. My wife said she really wanted to talk to them and I said when I get home she can come over and I'll ask my mom to bring them back after hanging out with her. She asked to just pick up the kids and I told her if she wants to see the kids so bad, go over to my mom's house and pick them up, but it won't be the smartest thing she did. My wife got upset and said I always hide behind my mom and I told her if she wants to see the kids to go over to my mom's house, that is if she's bold. Giving a frustrated sigh, she hung up clearly knowing how petty my mom can be. Since then I haven't heard from my wife. I sent her one last text saying all we need to talk about from here is about the divorce and sometimes our kids. Right now, I'm only thinking about my daughter's lives. Just because my wife gave up on them, that don't mean they're alone. I know for a fact Trey wouldn't plan on giving up his player life. I hope while she's busy taking a facial from him, that she would think about that. It's not my problem anymore, and like I said, I'll let her worry about what might happen. I really want to thank everybody here for their amazing support. I was definitely scared to go down this road and it made me braver. I've heard stories about them catching their significant other in lies like I did. Even worse, some catching them in the act, which would have killed me. I'm definitely coming back from this BS one day. My wife was very flawed and it showed through her being extremely selfish. How could she break all the standards for him and force me to abide by them? It's a question I've been at hearing from good men lately and it seems unfair. This is my last update and I want to thank you guys one more time. Some hoes are just for the streets. Let's get a couple reactions before we call it a day. Pikachu Face 1620 says, Sorry you're going through this. In case you don't already know, you can get a co-parenting app and communicate with your ex about the kids exclusively through the app. Get one that's approved by the county handling the divorce and custody, so anything on the app is admissible in court. That way, if your ex tries to lie about you, make you out to be abusive to her or the kids, you have proof she's lying. If she lies to the kids about you, text her about it on the app. Whatever she says is admissible. Make sure all communications about visitation are through the app. If she skips out on visitation often, and you, or your mom, take care of the kids most of the time, your ex has to pay you child support. Your attorney should know which apps are approved by the county. Good luck, OP. One more quick thought from Chani Chan. She's going to end up regretting her decision, and I hope you're going to have a really good laugh about it when that happens. Mm -hmm.